the, the project is called Drop ID, and the idea is that we want to have a more simpler method in order to detect Alzheimer's disease biomarkers. So a lot of this conference has been about phosphorylated tau and neurofilament light and GFAP and how important they're going to be in the future of diagnostics, particularly when we have a new drug which could potentially lower amyloid and, and has clinical benefit. Now we recognise that there are maybe some potential issues with blood collection, fa the fact being that in primary care we're not set up quite yet to collect blood in the, in the way that we need it. We want to be able to monitor patients more regularly over time for personalised management. So the way that Drop ID is trying to serve that area by having a more simpler method to collect blood from patients and do the same diagnostic tests but on a, on a method which can be collected remotely or in primary care. We uh, did a study in, at the um, ACE um, Alzheimer's Center in Barcelona where uh, the study team collected um, blood samples from a venal puncture but also from a finger prick and they spotted the capillary and the venous blood onto a card and then they shipped the card to um, the University of Gothenburg where we uh, extracted the cards and analyzed uh, the illusion and measured the biomarkers that are related to Alzheimer's disease. Um, and we also measured as a reference um, the plasma values of those biomarkers because as uh, they are considered to be, um, or those is the reference that we are using for blood-based biomarkers. And then we correlated the results from the finger prick samples and the venous samples from the card with the plasma biomarkers and we found that they correlate quite strongly and uh, significantly. And then we also distinguished the um, patients from the memory clinic uh, regarding the amyloid status, so if they are amyloid positive or amyloid negative in their CSF values. And there we also saw that uh, the capillary and the venous um, samples uh, or uh, concentrations in the samples differ significantly between the groups. So it seems like we can also use capillary, for example, phospho217 uh, um, to distinguish uh, AD posi uh, amyloid positive and amyloid negative individuals. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, the, the, the essentially the punchline of the experiment is that we essentially can come up with a similar result from a finger prick test that you can with the standard blood tests, which everyone are, 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 are rightly assuming are, are the gold, new gold standard in, in AD diagnostics. The study is preliminary. Um, there are several different questions that we need to answer. Stability of the blood on the blood spot cards, can it withstand going in post or staying in a doctor's office for those, those type of things. And really where you want this is potentially in the many, many years is, it, is individuals being able to collect blood spots by themselves and it being analysed in the lab. And the variability of individuals being able to do that themselves when they don't have a, a research nurse to, to help them with it. What kind of variability do we see there? But the, the preliminary results are super encouraging that we can say that essentially, first of all, we were quite surprised that we could measure a phosphorylated tau in a finger prick test for a start, and that it, rela it, it relates to um, uh, the, the blood EDTA, normal blood measures of, of this biomarker. I think it's super encouraging. So th these, there are uh, multiple things we, we will have to think about. The stability question is, is the major one, and we, st we started to answer this, you know, how many weeks can we still use this blood test for in the extraction process? We need to also understand the extraction process, you know, it has, it has some steps to it, right? So we need to make sure that that is a stable measurement over time. Um, I think that this is something which people can really easily get on board with. You know, this is, you know, a lot of people do finger pricks for, for multiple different tests around for different, for, for different disorders. So. Um, we see that this is potentially an application for primary care if we can prove it in, in larger cohorts. But as you say, a potential for home collection as a pre-screening tool, maybe if you're at risk. Maybe a, a doctor has, maybe someone has um, subjectively concerns for their cognitive health. It could be kind of an entry point of you then getting a more specific test by going to see a doctor that way. So the, 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 the plan with this, as I say, this is a preliminary study. We know that the biomarker levels from the finger prick and, and the plasma correlate. What we need to now test is that the diagnostic accuracy is also the same. This is something we haven't done extensively. So we're working with several centres around Europe where they will start prospectively collecting the finger prick test, the venous blood test and the ED tape test and we'll test this kind of in a head-to-head -head fashion. And then the next step, if, if that's positive, is what we've discussed, 
is being able to test this application of people collecting finger prick tests unsupervised. So can they do this themselves? Do you get the same results as if you did it with a nurse helping you out at the same time? Um, so that will kind of prove the feasibility of it.